Philadelphia gets really good news on Landon Dickerson and a pretty interesting update on the current status of Lane Johnson's continuous injury. And Philadelphia versus the 49ers. Niner fans are claiming the game was rigged. I'm Thomas Mott. This is the Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show. A little bit later than usual here on a Tuesday. Been an absolutely wild day overall. But we need to go ahead and update you on what's going on in the National Football League, most specifically with the Philadelphia Eagles. And there's some good news. We'll start with good news, right? You guys like good news. Landon Dickerson, the injury that a lot of you guys were asking me about yesterday on the show. Well, we're going to have an update, and it's actually good news. Bleeding Green Nation has it. You see it on your screen. Quote, Eagles starting left guard Landon Dickerson is expected to be available to play in Super Bowl 57, according to a report from Jeff McClain. Good news for Philadelphia. Dickerson suffered an arm injury that caused him to exit early during the Birds' NFC Championship game win over the San Francisco 49ers. McLean reports that it's a hyperextension of his right elbow, which, is le- which will likely cause him to wear a brace in order to practice and play. The Eagles will be happy to have Dickerson in the fold. He made his first Pro Bowl this season while ranking 16th out of 88 guards graded by PFF Focus, or PFF, a uh, minimum of 20% of snaps played. Dickerson was actually PFF's highest graded offensive player in the win over the 49ers. His backup, meanwhile, was the lowest graded offensive player. Andre Dillard ranked 71st out of 141 guards graded by PFF. With Dickerson set to play, the Eagles are on track to have all 22 starters for the Super Bowl. To be so healthy this late in the season is pretty incredible, end quote. That last line there is 100% accurate. To be this healthy, this late in the season, we didn't even talk about Avante Maddox looking very good against the 49ers. It's all incredible, whereas you juxtapose that with the Kansas City Chiefs, and they are dealing with a plethora of injuries that we talked about on yesterday's show, so be sure to go back and check that one out. Now, the Dickerson injury, again, my take on this is that it's not going to be a big deal. Two weeks, hyperextension of his right elbow, they're going to brace it, he's going to play, he'll play through the pain, and he should play the entire Super Bowl. Now, if you were to have to go ahead and come out, as mentioned here, you do have a pretty good fill-in at left guard. I know PFF rated, uh, ranked Andre Dillard 71st out of 141 guards, but he didn't play a lot, but when he did come in and fill in for Dickerson, I think he did a pretty decent job overall. And so not necessarily a concern or a worry there, but at least we know that Dickerson is going to practice, most likely will play, and is not going to be any sort of chance of missing the game on two Sundays from now, which is huge because Philadelphia, especially on the interior offensive line, is going to need every bit of power they can get to not only dominate, but also slow down Chris Jones, who might be the one big defensive game record that could cause some serious problems for Philadelphia if that were to actually be the case. So thumbs up for Dickerson uh, for actually being being seemingly good to go and be able to play. Now, before you go ahead and move over here to Lane Johnson and the 49ers in just one second, I have mentioned I am giving away this towel, sorry, this towel, the NFC Championship game towel that was given out at Lincoln Financial Field when I was in attendance on Sunday. I have an extra one. This one stays on my wall. I have an extra one sitting over there, and I'm giving it to one of the members of this show. A lot of you guys were messaging me down below in the comments of yesterday's show saying, hey, Thomas, send it to me. Well, remember, you have to be a member, and there are only about you know a couple dozen of you guys who are members of the show, which you still have time to do. Go down below, click join, become a member. By the end of the week, I'll pick a random member and send it to them if they live in the United States states but that's how you get a chance to win the towel you got to be a member of the show so join down below okay over here to lane johnson i thought the delaware online did a very interesting write-up on the situation with johnson you know we talked about oh he's healthy he's playing he's looking fine that is all true but he's definitely playing through some pain and the fact that he was able to not only dominate on sunday against nick bosa there's some really good tape on twitter uh which you should be following me at real, at real thomas mott really good tape of him dominating on twitter uh, he was actually pretty banged up and still a little bit hurt. Here's this quote. So, Lane, so, so there Lane Johnson sat. More than an hour after the Eagles clinched their spot in the Super Bowl, eye black still smeared down his face, his uniform still on long after the rest of his teammates had celebrated, dressed, and left. Johnson was proud, not just because he's going back to the Super Bowl for the second time in his career, but more because of how he's going back when the Eagles face the Kansas City Chiefs on February 12th in Glendale, Arizona. That's because Johnson admitted that he was nervous as blank before the Eagles beat the 49ers 31-7 in the NFC Championship game. And it wasn't just because Johnson was going to play against pass rusher Nick Bosa, who led the sacks, uh, who led the NFL with 18 and a half sacks this season. Rather, Johnson said it was because, quote, I was on one leg. There are so many unknowns as to what Johnson is trying to accomplish by playing through a torn abductor muscle in his groin area that needs surgery. The injury could resurface at any point, leading to excruciating pain. And Bosa, the likely defensive player of the year, was certainly ready to take advantage and 
quote. And so a little bit of a glimpse into what Lane Johnson is actually playing through right now. I was on one leg is what he said. One leg. Now, again, the way the abductor works, I'm not going to get into the whole, you know, biology or the anatomy of the situation, but it does cause excruciating pain. And like the article says here, it could go at any time. The fact that one, he was able to play through one leg, but two, play so darn well through one leg gives me a lot of hope that he should be able to play very close to not 100% physically, but 100% mentally two Sundays from now when Philadelphia travels to Glendale, Arizona. What's interesting about this story is it does tie into what we just mentioned with Landon Dickerson. Had Lan- Landon Dickerson gotten injured or not been able to play in the, in the Super Bowl, then Dillard would have to for sure be the left tackle, meaning that the backup for Mylotta is slowly goes down the list. Driscoll, though, will for uh, officially be the backup right tackle for Johnson as he had been earlier on this year. And so the idea that you could you know move Dillard over to right tackle if Dickerson were to go ahead and play to replace Lane Johnson does not seem to be the case. It will be Dickerson who would fill in if there was a situation where Johnson was unable to play, either play for whatever reason in the Super Bowl or finish the game as well. But I think it looks like, again, the fact that he was able to play on one leg and play so darn well is really, really good news. Okay, over here to our final story of the day, a funny one. We'll call it the NFL National Story of the Day because it does tie into the 49ers. Bleeding Green Nation has the write-up here, and the title says 49ers players felt like the NFL told refs to get Philly to the Super Bowl. It's interesting overall, but when you go ahead and read the article, it's um, it's it's one worth you know kind of laughing at. So this comes from the San Francisco Chronicle. Quote: Then McCaffrey's amazing run tied the game, instilling a sense of hope. We needed like five more of those. A dejected McCaffrey said later, the Eagles responded with a 14-play, 75-yard touchdown drive facilitated by three defensive penalties that negated potential stops. Suffice it to, suffice it to say, the Niners weren't thrilled with the officiating. It felt like once Purdy got hurt, someone at the league called down and said, make sure the Eagles get to the Super Bowl and not them. One Niner player told me, I'm withholding his name because he would prefer to keep his money rather than paying a fine in the NFL. That may be a bit over the top, but let's just say he wasn't the only frustrated person in the locker room, end quote. Now, I want to be 100% with you. A couple of those calls did go in favor of Philadelphia, and that happens from time to time in the National Football League. But the idea that there was a situation where the NFL was trying to make sure that the Eagles were going to go to the Super Bowl and that's why the Eagles won is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Now, you can feel that way as a 49er player, but if you actually watch the game, or I would argue played in that game, Philadelphia dominated. They dominated that game. And yeah, it was 7-7 there for a time. But did you really think at any moment after Brock Purdy was injured, the 49ers had a legit chance to win that game? The answer was no. And in the end, Philadelphia dropped, what, 31 points on them? You're telling me that even with they didn't get a couple of those calls going the wrong way if you're the 49ers, that they would have been able to overcome being down by three or four touchdowns by the third quarter? It's it's just ridiculous. It's not even something to go ahead and consider. But fun that, you know, the 49ers felt like they could have done it had it not been for a couple of bad calls. No, if the ending was 31-28, then maybe you can argue a couple of bad calls cost you the season, but when it's 31-7, it's a little bit different. Okay, a lot of new uh, subscribers here to the Thomas Mott Show. Appreciate each and every one of you. Plenty more stuff like this coming up the next couple of days and weeks. Enjoy it. Thumbs up. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show. 